Scientists recently found that human brains are about 0.5% plastic by weight. That's insane. Your brain should have no plastics at all. Yet the trend is showing that the amount of plastics in your brain is going to be increasing, eventually reaching 1% and who knows, maybe even 10%. But here's the good news. You can remove microplastics from your body, including the brain. In this video, I'm going to cover the ways to do so and also how to prevent these microplastics from getting into your body in the first place. To understand how to remove microplastics from your brain, we have to understand how do they get into the brain in the first place. Because the brain is such a precious organ, your body shields it from other things in the bloodstream with what's called the blood-brain barrier. Only certain essential nutrients like glucose are able to cross the blood-brain barrier. Unfortunately, it's been seen that nano, but not microplastics, are able to breach the blood-brain barrier in this 2023 study on mice. Microplastics are defined as smaller than 5 millimeters in diameter, or less than 0.2 inches. This means they're quite small, about the size of a grain of sand, or the width of a human hair follicle. There are also nanoplastics which are even smaller, 1 nanometer to 1 micrometer in size, which is the size of a particle of smoke or the width of a strand of DNA. You can't see it with your bare eyes. Both of them are bad and you want them out of your bloodstream because eventually they'll be able to go to your brain. Plasma donation and blood donation has been seen to decrease the amount of forever chemicals in firefighters who are exposed to large amounts of smoke chemicals. Looking at the difference between blood and plasma donation, then it looks like plasma donation is more effective than just blood donation. But not doing anything is the worst scenario because your body doesn't have an active plastic excretion pathway. There's also what's called plasma exchange that's used by a lot of longevity clinics. It's a procedure by which plasma is separated from the blood cells with a machine. After that, the blood cells are mixed with the liquid to replace the plasma and then returned to the body. Plasma exchange is often done to remove extra antibodies, abnormal proteins or other substances from the blood. It may be used to treat certain types of blood disorders, autoimmune disorders, nervous system disorders or other conditions. Dr. Anil Bajnath is a medical doctor with his own clinic and he routinely does plasma exchange on his patients. If you expose the blood and plasma to ozone and UV light, you get what's called EBO or extracorporeal blood oxygenation and ozonation. You basically expose the plasma to ozone and UV light before re-entering the body to clear out dead cells, viruses, bacteria and perhaps microplastics as well. There's currently no clinical evidence that EBO or ozone would remove microplastics from your blood, but regular plasma donation does. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few years we would have evidence showing that EBO does eliminate these microplastics in your blood, so you can effectively filter your blood. We already have evidence that UV light does affect microplastic texture and structure. Sunlight or UV light can degrade microplastics. It's just that you can't shine UV light directly into your blood unless you're doing EBO. It's seen that environmental plastics exposed to solar UV radiation will eventually photooxidize and degrade into micro and nanoplastics. They basically break apart. That's why you find all these microplastics in the water and even the Arctic ice sheets. The sun and environmental erosion is degrading regular plastic bottles and packaging into microplastics that then travel around the world. The UV radiation from the sun can't enter your bloodstream because it can't get past the skin. That's why you can't sunbathe away microplastics. There's also what's called ultraviolet blood irradiation or UBI where you basically do a UV light IV. UBI was used quite extensively in the 40s and 50s to treat certain medical conditions to destroy bacteria and viral particles in the blood. It was forgotten for a few decades, but now a lot of longevity clinics have also started to use it again. EBO is quite expensive, it costs around $2,500, whereas UBI is much cheaper, it costs a few hundred dollars only. But the cheapest and also effective way to remove microplastics from your blood is to do plasma or blood donation. Heat can also apparently destroy microplastics. A 2024 study saw that boiling water removed 80% of polyesterine in water that had microplastics. Now, you can't boil your blood to remove the microplastics. However, there is research that sweating makes you excrete these forever chemicals, heavy metals and BPA, which is a type of plastic, through the sweat. Sweating is a lot more effective in excreting toxins and BPA than urine or blood. One way you can sweat a lot and excrete microplastics and all the other chemicals is by taking a sauna regularly. 
the amount of microplastics you excrete through sweat is probably not that massive because the vast majority of your sweat is still salt and water. But it's a simple and easy thing to do. Plus, it also has a lot of other health benefits. Exercising and sauna are just very good for your cardiovascular health. And because we're living in a modern world full of different kinds of environmental toxins, I think it's quite important to have a regular sweating practice, whether that be exercise, hot yoga, or a sauna. There's also a bile acid sequesterant called cholesteramine that's used to lower high cholesterol as well as help with mold illness by removing bile acids in the body. The bile is a digestive fluid produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder, but small amounts of bile acids can also be present in the bloodstream. Regardless, the bile probably contains microplastics as well. In this 2010 study, regular use of cholesteramine was seen to decrease the amount of forever chemicals in the serum. This is not definite proof, but it might work. I think all of this means that you need to have your liquids inside the body moving and flowing regularly. That applies to the blood, the lymph and the bile. The reason is because we're just exposed to a lot more environmental toxins and pollutants on a regular basis. Another way the microplastics get into your brain is through your nose. A 2024 study analyzed the olfactory bulbs of 15 deceased individuals and found microplastics in 8 of them. This suggests that the olfactory bulb is one of the possible entry points of microplastics into the brain. The olfactory bulb is a mass of tissue at the bottom of the brain, above the nasal cavity, that mediates the sense of smell to the brain via nerves. Particles and smells go into your nose and the nerves signal the brain about the smell. Microplastics can apparently infiltrate the tissue through the nose. This is also one of the passages microplastics can enter your bloodstream. You inhale them. When you inhale microplastics, they circulate throughout the body and get lodged into different tissues, such as the olfactory bulb, through which they get into your brain, or the lungs, the blood, the bone marrow, the skin, and gut. So can you, like, degrade microplastics inside your nasal cavities? Theoretically, oxygen does degrade microplastics similar to UV light. It just oxidizes the plastic. But breathing regular air probably isn't gonna be giving you enough oxygen. However, hyperbaric oxygen therapy or HBOT could. As a disclaimer, this is a speculation from my part because there are no studies looking at HBOT's effects on microplastics. But you are breathing very high amounts of oxygen during a HBOT session, so I wouldn't be surprised if it did degrade microplastics in your airways. Regardless, HBOT has antioxidant effects and it also oxygenates your tissues, which suffers when the red blood cells attach microplastics. What do you do if the microplastics are already inside your brain? One possible way to eliminate microplastics from your brain is via the glymphatic system. The glymphatic system is a lymphatic system in the brain that helps to clear out toxins and old proteins inside the brain. It has an important role in preventing neurodegeneration. The glymphatic system works through an exchange of fluids and solutes between the cerebrospinal fluid around the cerebral arteries and interstitial fluid of the brain, as well as the spinal cord. The exchange occurs via arterial pulsation. Most of this waste clearance in the brain occurs during sleep. During sleep, the interstitial space increases by 60%, resulting in enhanced fluid exchange between the cerebrospinal fluid and interstitial fluid. So, sleeping enough and getting Getting especially deep sleep is important for keeping your glymphatic system active. With stagnating lymph and a stagnating glymphatic system, your brain begins to accumulate all different kinds of toxins, old proteins, cellular waste, and possibly microplastics. Another important factor for glymphatic system function is melatonin, the sleep hormone. Melatonin regulates sleep cycles, but it's also a powerful antioxidant that helps with glymphatic system function. Interestingly, melatonin has been seen to degrade BPA and protect against the oxidative stress caused by microplastics. Again, there is no evidence that supplemental melatonin would degrade microplastics inside your brain, but it certainly has antioxidant effects that can protect against the damage. And it helps with deep sleep. But it's also important to reduce your exposure to microplastics in the first place, because there's a limit of how much your body can handle. You can't avoid all the microplastics in the world because they're literally in the air that we breathe, especially in big cities. But there are a few simple and easy swaps that you can make to dramatically reduce your exposure to microplastics. Number one, plastic cutting boards. Every time you cut into it with a knife, you're releasing millions of microplastics into your food. Use a wood or stainless steel board. Two, Tupperware leaches microplastics into your food, especially if you heat it up. Swap it for glass and stainless steel containers. Three, Teflon pans leach billions of microplastics into your food. Get stainless steel frying pans. Four, plastic utensils like spatulas also leach microplastics. Use wood and steel spatulas. Five, plastic tea bags leach microplastics into your tea when they're boiled. Choose loose leaf tea or cotton tea bags. 
Number 6. Coffee pots get heated and thus leach microplastics into your coffee. Use paper filter coffee or French press. Number 7. Plastic bottle and tin cans. Use glass bottles or paper cartons. 8. Polyester underwear robs microplastics into your private parts. Use cotton underwear. Number 9. Bleached toilet paper is full of hormone disruptors. Pick uncolored toilet paper that looks kind of yellow or grey. It's cheaper and without the bleach. 10. Takeaway cups and lids get heated and they leach microplastics into your coffee. Get a reusable thermos or stainless steel cup. Alright, let's bring it all together. Microplastics can accumulate in your brain and other organs. They enter the brain through the blood and the olfactory bulb through the nose. Our bodies are exposed to microplastics everywhere. Food, packaging, water, personal care products, skincare products, cooking wear, underwear and even the air that you breathe. You can't avoid all microplastics unless you go live in the Amazon or something, but you can excrete them regularly. The most effective method of removing microplastics from your blood is with plasma donation or plasma exchange. EBO or ultraviolet blood irradiation might provide additional effects by degrading microplastics with the UV light. To remove microplastics from your brain, you need to have the glymphatic system active. Most of that happens during the night. For that you need to get good sleep, especially deep sleep, and also have higher levels of melatonin during your sleep. There are a lot of microplastics in all food products, even the ones that you wouldn't think so. Check out this video next to know the foods that have the most microplastics and what alternatives you can use. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem, stay optimized, stay empowered.